Hi, I'm Lena Rao here at the TechCrunch TV studios. You're joining us for Crunch Week, where we discuss this week's uh, most interesting and popular stories. I'm joined by Colleen Taylor and Crunch Week regular Anthony Ha. Um, the first story that we want to talk about, uh, which is a big one, was that Twitter confirmed um, the acquisition of Bluefin. Uh, so I want to take it, um, or have you, Anthony, our resident, you know, advertising expert, uh, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, um, well, it was something that was uh, Business Insider broke the story, and then a lot of people were kind of talking about it for a day, and then it, it, it was confirmed. Um, but uh, it was, I think, a, another sign of how Twitter is getting really serious about both advertising and um, analytics. So what Bluefin does is basically, you know, collect a lot of data um, about sort of, you know, related to TV and then you know TV content and how it's registering um, on Twitter. Um, and so I think it's it, you know it's a really good way for Twitter to be able to sort of quantify and go to advertisers and say, hey, listen, this is the value we're actually providing. It's not just you know here's like a million tweets about this, but things that are a little bit more you know subtle and nuanced. Um, and, and I think that's you know certainly something that other companies have been trying to provide and other startups have tried to provide. And and so now I think you know Twitter can do more of that in house. Yeah, I mean it was definitely interesting because uh, you know the reported amount um, was like around seventy million or so, and which is one of the highest acquisition prices that, that Twitter has made, um, right. you know, so far. So that's a, obviously they, they really are betting on this right. technology. Well, and to I think them. it's yeah more of a technology acquisition yeah. versus so many of the other Twitter acquisitions, which are much more you know talent focused, and so you know less money. Yeah, and I wonder if like this is really going to translate into real <laughs> advertising dollars for them or, or, or some sort of monetization because you know it, it, they're sort of ramping up that as they look towards an IPO. Right. I think that that's and and you know I think it is one of those things where it's everyone likes to sort of you know kind of roll their eyes about and make jokes about Twitter or monetization. I think we've been hearing that it's and I think you know Alexia did a story a, a few months ago about you know right. the, the, the revenue is is actually ramping up in a pretty serious way. But you know that when you sort of start from zero, um, it, you know you're still gonna have a long way to go before you can become you know a big company from a regular revenue perspective. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting because we had um, Anamitra Banerjee on, who was uh, one of their first product people. Um, and uh, worked specifically on their ad products. He was on Ask a VC uh, a few weeks ago, and he was saying how like they were very deliberate about trying to figure out how they were going to make money. I mean, it wasn't like they were just not thinking about it from the start. Right. And, and a lot of criticism has been pushed towards Twitter on you know why they haven't been able or why they didn't start earlier on advertising and and why they weren't creating meaningful revenue. Um, but that they were, you know, it, it, from his perspective, they were being very thoughtful about it. And so, um, you know, it's sort of interesting now to see them really ramp things up. Right. Um, I think, you know, the other interesting th way to look at it is also more from, like, the startup ecosystem perspective. Because, and, and I haven't heard too much about this, so I don't know, you know, for a fact that there are startups concerned about this. But, you know, certainly when people talk about the Twitter ecosystem, in the past there's been this idea that, you know, don't build consumer apps anymore. Twitter is doing that. You're going to compete with Twitter. But you can build analytics. You can build all this other stuff, and you'll be kind of safe. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, mm -hmm. that is maybe not necessarily the case anymore. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. The first, first they came for the consumer app, <laughs> right? Then they yeah. came for the for the analytics right. things. They're right. going to do it all. And I'm sure they're going to, you know, they would, if we were to talk to them about the, well, they would probably just refuse to talk to us. But <laughs> and then they would say that, you know, this is there's still a lot of room. And and I think that's actually true. I mean, that one of the things that's challenging about talking about this stuff um, is, you know, on analytics. I mean, you say analytics, but that actually encompasses so many different things. But you know, it's, if you sort of just group them all together, it's like, oh no, like Twitter's doing analytics now. You guys, you know, everyone else is just in trouble. Is maybe not necessary. Is not quite uh, the case as well. It's right. fascinating to me too how maybe you know five or ten years ago, people thought that Facebook and Twitter were threats to things like television, but now we're just seeing how complementary they are. Right. I mean, like last weekend was the Super Bowl and. Twitter is just all Super Bowl right. stuff. Like people are still watching TV, you know, but they're tweeting too, and so obviously right. Bluefin kind of brings those two things together. Right. And one of the things that Twitter also announced this week was that they um, there were I think three hundred thousand tweets that included ad-related hashtags from the Super Bowl, um, which is you know I mean still compared to the amount of people watching the Super Bowl is not a huge number, but it 
it's it's not a small number either. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we're seeing more and more um, sort of news flashes like that around events and right. you know uh, concerts or right. sports events or right. things like and that. It's becoming yeah. really more of a norm. Well, I think it is. You know, the, so many people I think are joking. I think even we were joking that you know everyone wants to say, oh, it's the most social Super Bowl ever. Which yeah. I mean, first of all, it shows how debased the word su social has become, <laughs> but <laughs> is also you know reflect. I mean, it's just that's just obvious. It's obvious that that's going to happen. And I right. think you know it's more now about how big, it, how much of that is actually monetizable. Right. So I want to move on to the the next um, topic. But uh, so right now I have 318,000 emails in my inbox. You're not using your priority inbox. Are I'm you? not. I'm not. But um, but I, why I said that? They are. That's unread. that's how many are unread. <laughs> but like <coughs> anyway, right. I mean, I'm, I'm not even going to go Sorry. into my right. whole like. What, so as an aside, by the way, like if you're like sending us emails and then an hour later, have you read my email yet? Don't. Yeah, don't. don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I want to talk about that because mailbox, which is like this super sleek um, email management app for for iOS, was released to the public this week, and it's like gone viral and crazy like right now I think there's 700 a wait of 700,000 for <laughs> like there's 700,000 people who are on this wait list um, for the app which is insane unfortunately Colleen and I are both Android users <laughs> so we're not going to be enjoying it but what do you think are you uh, going to download I'm going to download it I mean I think it's it's a huge problem um, obviously I think what we see with a lot of these you know like email type apps is like everyone's like oh yeah like email is a huge problem um, but like, and and a lot of times though they only solve like one part of it. Right. And I think certainly what I've seen in a lot of the conversation, and and you know, granted, mostly from people who haven't used it because it's a really small number of people who used it, um, is is this idea that, you know, the problem isn't how we sort our email, how we prioritize our email. It's the fact that there's just so much freaking email. Like the fact right. that you have that many unread emails. I don't know that any one app is gonna like magically make that not a problem. And and certainly you see like. I think one thing that's kind of become, I guess meme isn't the right word for it, but something like just a lot of people tweeting right. screenshots, and it's like, oh, <laughs> 300,000 yeah. emails to go. And you're like, this, I don't know that this is a great situation. Yeah. And that, you know, <laughs> this app is making it that much better. Right. That's right. That's totally right. What do you think? Do you have an email problem? I, I definitely have an email problem. Um, you know, sometimes I just declare email bankruptcy, mm -hmm. and I, you know, check all <coughs> mark is read, <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, just it. to get it yeah. off of my mind. But um, it's cool, this mailbox thing, because it, it's from the guys that built Orchestra, mm -hmm. which is a really popular productivity app. Um, so I'm excited for if it ever comes to Android. I am too. Um, and, and I will say, to be fair, on Android, Gmail's app is, is pretty good, and the email management is, is, is better, from what I've heard, than iOS. But I don't right. know. I mean, it, it e I mean, the email. I mean, that's that's a very low bar, but yeah, I'm, <laughs> sure, I'm sure it's better than it is on iOS. There is no <laughs> management on iOS. It's, yeah. it's just, hey, here's some mail. Yeah, do that's what right. you will. Yeah. Um, well, uh, let us know what you end up when you okay. end up. Maybe it'll right. be next year. Maybe <laughs> right. two years from now. I don't know. <laughs> right. Um, well, I you know maybe I'll nudge them a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, Colleen, you had a big story this week. Uh, you I broke. had yeah. It was an awkward story <laughs> <laughs> because um, you know as you might know, AOL owns TechCrunch, and this week I had heard uh, some buzz, some rumors from some pretty credible sources that AOL was in talks to buy Gadget, GDGT, mm -hmm. um, the, the blog started by former Engadget co-founders. Um, but uh, so I had to kind of call our bosses, <laughs> like our bosses, bosses, bosses at AOL and try and confirm it. And of course they didn't respond right. and they didn't call me back. But um, right. I, I'm pretty, it's looking like this is going to close. So that's cool. You know, where AOL is buying up a, a great gadget blog, getting the old band back together from Engadget. Right. Right. Because these, uh, the Engadget founders actually sold their their blog to AOL. So it's like a, this would be a two-time <laughs> AOL. <laughs> right. AOL acquisition. I, guess. I know. Yeah. So we were all kind of joking around yeah. here, like we should go off, start TechCrunch or, or yeah. Crunch right. or Tech <laughs> yeah. or something, and then uh, bring it back. But it's it's you know it will be exciting if this deal does indeed close. Yeah. And to be fair, I mean that's a very common. I mean maybe too common startup path of. I mean certainly you see that at like Google, like people leaving Google, starting companies, and then you know being. Acquired, you know, a year or two later, and and then often, you know, it's just a talent acquisition, and so it was just like, oh, like basically, it was a really complicated way to get a raise. Right. <laughs> awesome. Which well, and and I I wanted to just uh, sorry to interrupt, but um, 
you know, as we're saying maybe hello to one uh, family, it sounds like we are saying goodbye to another because About.me spun off this week, um, which was acquired by AOL around the same time that TechCrunch was acquired, if I Was it? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's kind of a funny thing because it is, it's Tony Conrad right. who's known for True Ventures and all these things, great sort of entrepreneur and also investor, uh, sold About.me to AOL, but then he kind of said, this isn't working out. You know, I'm going to buy it back right. and get some new investors and it's a startup again. It's it's always interesting when that happens. Yeah, for sure. So. And we would, you know, never understand why anyone would ever want to leave AOL. <laughs> no, not at all. No. No, it's great. <laughs> it's all sunshine and rainbows. Um, well, thanks so much for joining us this week, and uh, have a great weekend.